Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show. Welcome to the uh, the cooking show here. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, we're, we've got both cameras up, and we're going to do the uh, chicken squash with jasmine rice uh, mix today. Hey, well, welcome. Really affordable meal. Uh, many of you who love jasmine rice are going to be happy to have it. Yeah, I'm David Sponheim, by the way. If you want to watch me, uh, it's David John Sponheim's YouTube account. Feel free to check me out. Right, so uh, welcome to my kitchen. How's everybody doing tonight? You don't have to answer that, that's okay. So, oh, look at that kitchen. Yeah, there, there you go. Nice spice rack back there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get into the Periscope show. We are recording this, so you'll be able to watch this into perpetuity. One of the nice things about having a, a daily show is I'm able to actually bring my life into your life. And you can enjoy what I do on a daily basis, which is uh, save money. Yeah. I, I like to cook and save money and what better way than to get everything you can get at a good price. So what I did today is I put together some amazing, amazing deal. I got chicken for half price and I'm going to open up the Periscope show. I'll show you this chicken here. It's a uh, Normally it's three dollars and four cents for a scope show. Yeah, I'll show you I got a dollar here. It's uh, coupons off. Normally it's three dollars. So you see, I've got the dollar fifty, dollar, and then fifty cents there. So it's it's like a dollar fifty for all that chicken breast chip of chicken. So that's a pretty good deal. And I pulled it out of the freezer. It's been defrosting here on the counter for a while. So yeah. COVID fresh, right. That's okay, Prince Andrew. I'm so glad you could make it. I was worried about you. That drive back from Suffolk must have been very, oh, I, I'm not supposed to know that. You had to search around for this new handle after finding the old third party bond wasn't working. Yes, Mark uh, knocked us down for a, uh, a the most minor violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act anyone has ever done. I mean, I had a small picture of Suffix. I said it's Suffolk County. Did I say Suffix? I'm sorry. That's right. I, I thought I said Suffolk. I'm not from England. My parent, my mother was English, as you know. I didn't mean Sussex. No, I said Suffolk. But anyway, we'll hear that on the recording in the future. I do believe she does. I make very good food. So I think she enjoys the food I make. Yeah. So let's do the uh, the Periscope ATP Daily Show. Getting into that right now. The difficult thing about uh, doing a show daily is it, it involves a tremendous amount of re repeat activity. So, you know, obviously the cooking show is established. We've got over 110 or so shows in our belt, under our belt. This is 5G tech. Uh, cooking, censorship, pandemic, sure. I can do cooking too. Okay, that'll work. Now I should do parentheses around those to set it across. It's the data. Okay, there we go. Okay, we, hopefully if this takes, we'll have a Periscope show running tonight. Okay, going live. Please, I love fries. Don't in any way bother Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein. They're they're in here trying to have a good chatting experience after all they've been through with all these these accusations of their misdeeds. You know, the old innocent until proven guilty. Well, if you're dead, you're innocent, I guess. Yeah, Jeff, Mark did that, and I know apparently Mark isn't. Uh, Mark has been getting money to stop me, Jeff. Yeah, they, they, one of the reasons why this third party is having a hard time here in America is Mark has been knocking our chatters out, so we don't get a lot of people to donate to us through 
the local American people. And we can't take donations from foreigners. So you understand the conundrum we're in here. Well, I do cook for humanity because this is my gift to use to show you how to cook and enjoy cooking. And one of the things that I've always wanted to do was give you all a, a, a low cost way of living through this tough American people. And we can't take donations from foreigners. So it, you this tough time we're living in. Yeah. And many people who aren't able to make their rent right now because they weren't given a, a massive estate with three or four castles uh, have the problem of actually being evicted right now. So I know that's difficult for many of you who do have three or four castles to understand. Right, Jeff? I mean, right, Prince, Andrew? All right. Now, please don't attack the art celebrity chatters, folks. As you know, Jeffrey Epstein is kind of in here on the QT because everyone thinks he's dead. So, yeah, give him a little a, a little leniency there. Yes, he has the islands, but but he also has a castle you didn't know about. Okay, well, I, that's between you two. I I'm looking for a castle in in, in Eastern Europe. Possibly in Transylvania. If, if Charles is willing to sell his, I'm, I'm open to bidding on it. Ask him if he's open to it. After all, my ancestry comes from that same area in, in Transylvania. We're, no, we were not vampires. We're not related to Vlad, although you are, I heard. All right, so we've got good things happening. Let's get these uh, chicken pieces going. So we're going to get the, uh, the rear burner going on. Oh, hang on. This is not acceptable. There we go. We're going to get the rear burner going on uh, level three. And I'm going to make the uh, jasmine rice first, I think. So we're going to be doing two things at once. I've got a ricer here that I'll be heating up. Let me plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. All right. I have a little a thing where I, I, I guess whether the plug is going in this way or that way, and, and inevitably it's always the wrong way. They decided to put a larger piece of metal on the plugs here. It's like I'm always, it never fails. I always plug it in and I have to turn it around every single time. Okay, we're getting an organic onion from Bonnie's Best here in Washington. I buy them in bulk, but I'm not gonna be buying big bags anymore because I'm ending my Costco relationship. Primarily because the experience is no longer fun. I don't get free food, you know? So what's the point? Okay, let's take a look at this uh, onion here. We're going to cut it. Boom. As you know, I'm falling back on my French curl knife from way back because it is my old standard. The other knives are great. I just, they too lose their blade. So I thought, well, I'm, if I'm going to lose blade and it's not a, a Ginsu knife, then I might as well use this old one right here, unless I have meat to cut. And I mean tough meat. So we're peeling the skin off of this onion here. You see me doing it with my hands in one side of the screen. A uh, different mic today, so it should be a hot mic. Uh, it's a, I didn't want the mic so close to the food. And although that probably would have been a good idea, but I like to talk to the camera up there too. Okay, we're doing onion for the ricer first. We're just going to get the onion going for that. All right, jasmine rice is very easy to make, and it's you could just put it in a ricer. So I'm going to get some oil on the base of that of that. Uh, get some oil on the base of that ricer there. Looks like it's running a little low. It should have enough. Well, it's being a tough, a tough atomizer for some reason. There we go. I'll just give it a little spin and get the basic coverage there. The reason why I'm making rice today is I have all this turkey basting, 
Now you can use a, a variety of things, chicken stock, any number of things. But you need flavoring in your rice, so I went with that. One idea is to actually get some, uh, a cheap idea is to get some chicken soup. The only problem is the rice has noodles in it. If you get the chicken soup with the rice in it, you throw that in there for a dollar and you've got yourself a really nice background. I'm not sure why that's up there. Hang on. Yeah, I'm not on Bitway right now. Well, it could. Jasmine rice could be like an Asian stripper. It's uh, from Thailand and prime, it's premium prime grade and it's non-GMO too. You can see the non-GMO label right there. I got this for $5 at Walmart. So I thought that was a really good deal. Yeah, so the rice does require some, I got some organic celery I'm gonna put in the rice. But I'm gonna save one sprig for the other. And I'm gonna throw some uh, carrots in the rice too. It's just a handful of these baby carrots. Put that at the bottom, really easy. I'm gonna split the carrots and the celery up between the two dishes. So we'll pick up the flavors of all that. Now you can cook with that if you're really poor, but I, I throw that in the compost heap. Because I'm not that poor that I, I would eat you know, anything. As you know, I enjoy being poor. I, I live in poverty, so it's it's a kind of a point of pride for me. Okay, a nice chop of celery for flavor. It has salt in it, so it's good. And I'd like to I'd like to throw a. Uh... Sorry, you weren't looking at the me cutting the vegetable there. I'm going to throw a little gar garlic in there for flavor as well. So you take that cube and just go like that, and that mashes them up, and they just pop right out. Just get those uh, those husks off of the garlic. Yes, when I when I made my vow of poverty when I was a young young man, it was a uh, it was liberating to know that I, I wouldn't be super rich. And of course, that doesn't preclude me from being super famous. All right, so that there you have it. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Okay. Well, that's getting hot on the grill here. I've got that level three. I better get that onion going for the chicken. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw a little butter down on the pan like that, just to get the milk going. Because we're going to fry this chicken, this breast of chicken. All right. Yeah, I'm going to get a slice of onion in there too, and the other half. And anything leathery like that, you don't want to put in the dish. See that? That's not good. Okay, we'll put that on the plate. Okay, the grill is getting nice and hot. Now this dinner is going to be a, uh, we'd get the rice going first. I want to prioritize that. So we're going to go over here and I'm going to use this uh, strainer. You need to get a strainer like this. It's perfect for what I'm doing. And let's see. As a scissor sign, I'm going to cut this package open here. There we go. It does not help. Are you talking about the Pizza Express? Yes. Well, that's nice. Well, you, you were the ones that made this happen, so you have to live in the... You know, if you go to the Denver airport, you'll have a much better time, Jeff. All the restaurants are open. You don't have to wear a mask. They'll accept you as who you are. Hey, Insane Canadian, how are you? Okay. Yeah, the Denver airport, all the restaurants are open. So in case you want to check it out. If you happen to be staying underground. Okay, we're gonna pour this into uh, this thing right here. Isn't that nice? Jasmine. 
I go all the way up to the top practically. There you go. And then I'm going to zip tie this with a, and that has one of those self sealing tops. So it's perfect. All right. So you got plenty of meals out of this. I, I doubt this is more than 50 cents worth of, or probably 25 cents worth of rice, literally. Okay. And we're going to wash this, of course. And so we go over to David's kitchen and you can, I've got a filter here that I just replaced this, the filter on it. I was surprised how many times it got clogged. But you want to rinse that rice really well because it rice is by and large uh, growing in the ground. And there's high levels of arsenic in rice. So, yeah. Okay, I'll let that drain for a little bit. Arsenic happens to be in the ground. It's naturally occurring, so you have to be concerned about that. Yeah, I think in terms of flavor today, we're going to go with... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with a little curry. I think I'm going to dust the, uh, the the rice bowl with a little curry. So I'm going to throw some curry in there at the base. That's a good starting point because, remember, curry has uh, turmeric in it, turmeric, which is very good for longevity. So if you plan on living a long life, and I know you do. Right, Jeffrey? Exactly. You're going to want to put that in there. All right, so then put the rice right on top like that. So a lot of the a lot of that comes up through the rice, and then take your your turkey base things that you've had from your entire meal. Now this came out of the turkey last week. It's still good. It's gelatinous, but look what I'm going to do. I'm going to invert it like that, like that. See that? That's all you got to do, and then turn it on, flip it on like that. Cover it up. Uh, it's not working out. It's too gelatinous for me. I'm going to add a little water to the top of it so it can get started steaming. I probably should have pre-microwaved that because it's going to take a while. All right, we'll just kind of press it in there like that and see what happens. Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it during the cooking process. That is kind of weird. Okay, over here we've got, we're going to go ahead and take some mustard that I have. Now, this is an old container of mustard that I got for 25 cents. See the mark on it? The mark of, of, of discount. The mark of discount. Duh. I'm going to take a, a knife out of here and just kind of use this stuff up because I really do need to use it up. And I'm going gonna, gonna to pull the wrapping off of this chicken. Whoops. And I'm going to put this on top of the uh, chicken here. See that? I'm just going to... You can see it. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of cover this with a little bit of this right here like that. It's still a little bit frozen, so I'm just going to set it on the grill with that mustard on the base of it. There you go. This is going to start the flavoring process. All right. Yes, you can put frozen items on grills. With a level three flame, it should be fine. I'm gonna get started with that, and then uh, I'll top it off with some curry powder, and then I'm gonna add my vegetable, which today is yellow squash. Crook neck squash to you. It is dark brown because it's really old, Jeff. Um, this was a Mendocino mustard with seeds and all that was spicy beer, made, made with red ale and spicy beer. It won awards, so and it actually smells pretty good. So I, I'm just going to put it right on there, man. Yeah, it, it's it, it is actually a Mendocino mustard, which uh, would probably sell for like seven dollars a jar. I got for twenty five cents. Just something I use. I, I don't let anything go go bad, so it, it goes into the flavoring. Marinades is perfect. I got some marinades from nineteen ninety nine. I'm still using. My Y two K supply is still uh, active, by the way. I've got even food. For, hey, thanks for the, the hearts there. Appreciate it. I've got foods from uh, turkey juice. Yeah. Foods literally store forever. I've got 1957 survival food in my uh, collection from a bomb shelter uh, that, my, uh, that somebody had in Utah. And it ended up in my house for some reason. And that still has, you know, 
carnation milk, brand new in the package. It has pancake mix. So, I mean, it's not like I want to exploit it and use it. I'm just going to keep it around as a collector's item. It'll go in my museum. The Museum of Bomb Shelters. Yeah, I'm working on this museum's idea where, where you know, you go through time in the museum and you'll actually enter different scenes from different time periods. Like I've got this entire setup of a 1933 uh, camping camping environment with a, a tent and everything. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. It'll be a three-dimensional museum. I know. You won't have time to run as president? Uh, I do. I have plenty of time. I'm not running the museum. My staff will run the museum, Prince Andrew. Yes. David, you won't have time. I, my staff will take care of that. I'm not worried. In fact, it'll probably be automated by then. Robots will be running my museum. No need to worry, though. Okay, so we're going to take that temperature, uh, to, to keep that temperature at that level right there. And I'm probably going to let that just sit. But I am going to throw some carrots on that dish uh, in the pan because they need to cook a long time. And I think it's only smart at this point to get those in there. Throw a little carrots in there. All right. And then I'm going to probably get my... My celery cut as well. Cleaning that knife off with the pan is pretty, pretty clever. Okay, we're just going to cut this little piece right here. Do a little jamming on that. Nice tight cuts for this. It's not going to cook very long, so you want to go thin on the celery. Now, again, the celery is not required this meal. If you are adverse to this, you don't want to put the vegetables on the chicken because that's cooking, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is, is dust the top of the chicken with curry. Hello. And I put the curry on top of the chicken, letting, letting it cook through. You will achieve browning at a certain point, but it will take two days. So I would recommend taking it up to six, level six. It's going up to level six right now. We are, we are at level six. Now the rice won't be done for the dinner. Uh, it's going to take a long time for that rice. It's going to take 45 minutes. So. Did you know curry powder is actually a British invention? Yes, I heard that it is coming from... What am I talking like that for? Yes, I heard curry is, talk, is definitely from Britain. I heard that, yeah. Uh, that was great accent, David. Have you thought about working in the TV industry? I don't need to work, unlike you, Jeffrey, or at a call industry. I, I, Jeffrey, I don't need income like you do. I know that sounds odd, but I'm actually quite wealthy. I don't mean to brag, but it's true. Unlike you, I don't have to go out to my island and slave among the girls. Yes, to draw salary from Mossad. It sounds like Trudeau in costume. Yes, it does. He, he does appear to, to sound like me at times. I agree. Is he doing me or am I doing him? That's the question. Okay, so as you can see, people who work like Jeff and Prince Andrew who have to get their fingers dirty in that granular world of dirt. Unlike me, I don't have to do that. I wear gloves. I'm sure they would, Prince Andrew. The, the problem is I'm not gay, and I'm not really sure you think I'm human. You see, it's technically impossible for me to actually look the same way I did 12 years ago. And I'm, I'm achieving that goal with the power of my, oh no, my fruit enzyme spray is gone. Oh no. 
I'll have to get that. I am not Dave. I'm Dave. Okay, so are we melting over here? Almost. It's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be enough moisture in the rice to, to actually, because if it starts to go below the rice, you got to add water. So keep an eye on that ricer and make sure that doesn't go below the rice. The base things are just absolutely disgusting when you look at them, but they taste great from the turkey, you know. And I've noticed the turkeys are getting a little tougher now. They're not like the, the hens of yesteryear. Is it the turkeys are suffering from COVID or something? Is that why they're so tough? You don't have to answer anything. Okay, we're, we're good. We're going to go ahead and break those chickens up with a little spatula. Separating them. Good. And flipping them over. It's important to flip the chicken. Nice. Okay, now now we're just we're going to go ahead and cut. We're going to cut the uh, yellow crookneck squash. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can actually cut it sideways like this. That's kind of a nice thing, like that. See it? It's kind of like a julienne of sorts. But you want to go about a half an inch thick. Okay, and then take the entire thing and put it right on top of the dish. There you go. It'll steam right through the chicken. Spread it out. Cover it up. And continue your steam fry at level six. Yeah, I wouldn't use a lot of the uh, mustard, just en enough to add to it. You know, so it's a spicy beer and red ale mustard. And it was really good when it first, uh, you know, look, when I first got the jar, it was a little bit, it was less brown. I will admit that, but I don't see how you can go wrong. It's got great ingredients, you know? Yeah. Top quality. Now with a dish like this, you might want to go in the, in the spicy direction. And in that case, mustard won't cut it. You might want to consider barberry sauce from Ethiopia. My barberry powder is uh, perhaps my most prized spice today in my herb collection. The berber, oh, sorry. It's Ethiopian berber, Ethiopian seasoning. So I'm not using a lot of it. It's it's got cayenne in it, but I'm going to sprinkle this a little bit on top, okay, just to give it that. It's an interesting mix of roasted garlic, allspice, ginger, and cardamom, along with cayenne and paprika. Very unusual. It's Ethiopian. Yes, Ethiopians do a lot of eating with their hands, too. Have you been to an Ethiopian restaurant? Well, that's right, your COVID spacing. Well, yes, yeah, send best wishes. Thank you. Haywood is having a birthday. Well, wonderful. Happy birthday. Yeah. Huh? Stringo, I don't get links here during this show. Um, I, you're forcing me to look at it. I, I assume it's COVID-friendly. When COVID school is friendly. place you have to be, why not go to school where remote learning can be as remote as you want? These are some plants are... Englishman in New York. Wow, okay. I like that. Yeah, I like Sting. I, I like always liked his music. You do speak a fluent Ethiopian? Akum Nagahalfla. Wow, I didn't know that from Tardigan. You're a mystery to everyone. Fluent Ethiopian. You know, I'm more into Swahili myself, but. Okay, let's move this up here. I'm gonna throw the Berberi on right now. Ever so light spattering. I mean, we're talking, you know, just a dusting. Because that cayenne is a, a very spicy thing, but it really makes the difference. 
Okay, give this a, a little shake like that. Now there's not a lot of water in here, just about a tablespoon. And the key is this is a steam fry. So in the concept of a steam fry is you're using the benefit of steam, which translates to 10 times more, uh, more action with heat. Once you add water to your mix, your steaming is, is the next step and it's very good for energy efficiency. I know my second language is not Ebonics, man. How you say that, man? No, I don't mean to in any way insult anybody when I impersonate them, but when Richard Pryor impersonated white people so poorly and he acted like we were a bunch of, well, hello there, goobers, uh, looking for some Wonder Bread. It, it, it definitely made me feel a little bit, you know, put off. You know what I'm saying? But I did not deny Richard Pryor his freedom of speech, nor did I say anything about his transgender relationship, which we all know he had after he was burned. Apparently he didn't burn his private part. You just met an Uber driver and thought I had a, I'd lived in Ethiopia or had a, are you serious? Now, how did you acquire that language, Trump Tardigan? Were you raised by Ethiopians in a natural setting in Ethiopia? Okay, we're looking at that turkey juice to send into the, the ricer here. Okay, we're all set to give this thing a good stir. Good. Nice. That's really a very good, uh, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of that gel from the uh, turkey. And this is how I kind of combo cook. I'm going to take some of that gel from the, the turkey and put it on the dish. So you're adding the essence of, of turkey gel from here. I'm going to pull that out and throw it on the dish. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. Oh no, the rice is in there, damn it. No, 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 please no. Well, I'll have to take some yellow squash and put it in there now. No, no rice, please. Well, I just kind of, I kind of screwed that up. So what I have to do now is, uh, while this is heating, I'm going to have to add a little more water to the dish. Don't worry, it's still good. Not a little more soupy, but I did get a good grill on those chickens. So I, with the high temperature, it's good. So we'll have that rice cooked in there as well. Yeah, it's not an extremely gay cooking show. And I think you're really insulting. I'm not even gay, dude. You know, for one, let's start there. Now, for two, is it Peter? Peter, your mom has asked you to, to clean up your room and, and you know you're 42 years old, it's time. I know, Tom, you're a mod. You're a very mod person. You're one of the mod people. You could be a mod. He's wondering how I know his name. Turk Peter, right? Yeah. I'm good at guessing names, Peter. Yeah, now I'm wondering why you're 42 living with your mom. Please explain. We're waiting. Is there a reason you couldn't get a job over the past 20 years of pre-COVID spacing? The person inside the small dark room behind you? Nobody. <laughs> there is no person back there. Are you seeing a ghost back there? I don't like him, no. No, I can't give him, no, the mod ship, no. There is a person? No, there isn't. There's nobody back there. I wonder who you're talking about. Okay, let's turn that down to level three now. I'm gonna take a spoon and go into the rice and make sure that's shuffling into the rice here. Oh no. 
Wow. Look at that. Okay, this is called emergency action needed, needed in the ricer. Warning, warning. There's almost too much water in there. That little bit of water I added was too much. It was perfect before I added that water. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a little something something here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. It's not hot around the side, it's okay. I'm gonna transfer a little bit more in there. Lifting the cover slightly so the rice itself doesn't go in there. All right, good. Okay, that's the level you need to be at. You can, wipe, you can wipe off the ricer so it's clean on the bottom, so it's good. The ricer can't have water at the base, so. All right, we're gonna put that back in the ricer and continue to cook. Go back on cook, okay. It just needs a little space. It's about a, maybe a half an inch. That's all it needs. Meanwhile, this dish is becoming more of a saute. And now the chicken is sauteing in the carrots, the onions, the garlic. And I'm going to add a little more garlic to top this off. And then I'm going to add some cumin at the, at the very end of this cooking cycle. Let's take some more garlic. I've got a little bit more of a couple cloves. Okay. If that's jet noise you're hearing in the background, it's because they fly jets over my house to test them out for no reason. Because they're never going to be used in war unless, of course, the New World Order wants to have Russia challenge the U.S., you know. But we thought we'd have a world war to see if we can use our powers to test out our equipment. That would be something, wouldn't it? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that garlic in on top while it sautés. I'm going to add some cumin, which is a wonderful uh, herb, which is the poor man's sass sassafras. The poor man's saffron. It's a wonderful, wonderful... If you ever get cumin, it's spelled C-U-M-I-N. I'm off the camera here. All right, you can turn everything down to a simmer because those yellow squash are pretty much done. The chicken is done and it's starting to like get more tender. I'm going to go ahead and clean up a little bit and we are almost done. The butter away. All right. All right, so people have been complaining that I've been losing too much weight. I'm down to a 38 waist, and I know it's it's almost amazing. And it's nothing, nothing I did intentionally. But I've been working like the Dickens around here physically. So that's why I think I lost 10 pounds. Thank you. This is definitely not a disaster. No, it'll come out really nice. Now, there's another idea that you can throw out there if you want, and I'm going to do this. And if you haven't done this before, it's how to turn your chicken dinner into a wow dinner. All right. Now, I'm not going to mention this in the upper section, but at four dollars, I can afford to spend a little bit more and take it up to six dollars and throw some some sh shrimp in there. So I've got these great shrimp right out of the freezer and watch what I do. that look robot-like? <laughs> oh, Christ. This is like a 51-count shrimp. Mm, I love the smell of shrimp. Just throw it in there right from the bag. You'll love it. Lift the cover on this thing. good. Break them up and separate them so they're evenly positioned. And then let them continue simmering on the stove. And what you're going to get is kind of a gumbo taste in the dinner. But man, it's like, it's the next level. It takes that, that shrimp level, takes it to a whole nother level. I? 
No, this is from Thailand. It had no Corexit in it whatsoever. No. In fact, this way, the chicken was raised on a, a ranch out there in the middle of, of, of Washington. I checked the location. The chicken were all recited. They, they recited the Bible to them during uh, during evening mass at the at the church. It's, it's Our Lady of, of the Rump Roast, and they have a wonderful brand of chicken. Our Lady of the Rump Roast, yes, they pray to the chicken every night. But no, the uh, chicken came from a uh, local chicken, and uh, the fish came from Thailand, and the jasmine rice came from Thailand. And no, they're not really. No, no, that's just not true. I like chicken. I like them taters too. Mm -hmm. I like taters and mustard. Mm -hmm. I like the way you talk. Mm -hmm. If there's a person back there. No, there isn't. There's nobody back there. Why do you think there's a person? Are you hallucinating? You like the black, the black look in back there? It kind of makes for a mystery, doesn't it? Unless I'm haunted by ghosts and I can't see their person back there because you can. I'm freaking out, man. This is freaky. All right. Well, there's there's probably something in your mind that's, that's misfiring. Maybe the random thought that you have is coming from your brain. Well, that concludes another wonderful dinner. For... Actually, we're going to let that saute some more. I'll talk some more, too. I've got to clean the kitchen up. It's compost keep time, and everybody wants to see how I do the compost. Now, don't buy one of those compost containers that has, uh, like, holes in it with carbon filters on it. Oh, my God, don't buy that. Just get a Tupperware this big at the local thrift store. Because I don't know, do they make Tupperware anymore? It's hard to say. So many things in America are no longer made. So... Just take that, that Tupperware and just, just throw that stuff in there. And put it out in the garden, and it'll make another meal when it grows things. Natural compost is so good. Don't ever throw that, that in the garbage. It's a waste of garbage space. I dump my compost thing every three days, so it fills up. David, where is that haircut and bowl. Um, well, we won't be needing it, but if you want, I'll bring it up. I'm using it, actually. Well, this is a complicated meal. I, I, I'll be frank. I'm, I'm not going to put the rice together with this dish. I'm going to serve it separately. Because I have a reheat last night. I made a wonderful uh, fettuccine. A Jerusalem artichoke fettuccine that I made in the other room. I'm going to bring that in and, and mix little bits of it, this together because it, it had the same ingredients, the squash and ch chicken. So, yeah, but this combo is good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you can feed six people with it no problem easily. Once that rice gets to the top here, once that rice gets to the top here, you'll see the rice kind of pop up. And I, I, it's basically one and a half cups of rice to two cups of water. That's the relationship that you have. It's a, li a little bit more water than rice, about half a cup more. So just so you know. But that will fill the entire ricer. And these things are very, very affordable and they're very economic. They cook on electricity and they're very, very cheap to use. No, I don't use a flow bee to cut my hair. No, no, I, I have a, a, a thing uh, maybe new to you. It's called a scissors. You're massive too. Yes. Well, stop eating if you're so massive. Oh, well, two meals for you would be good for you. I mean, I'm glad that you can get two meals out of four dollars. Gorgeous Irish person who's, who's massive, but no, the scissors has nothing to do with What's wrong with you? Are you psychotic? Buff baddie. What's the difference between NASDAQ and the new...
No, you're not allowed to post here. I told you that. You have been muted for five minutes. You will come back later. Oh, so we're just sauteing right now on the stove. Those, those rice have to be turned into the meal. So I'm going to go ahead once they're, they're now thawed. And remember that rice, or excuse me, did I say rice? It's the shrimp. Thank you. They're now thawed. You want to roll them into the meal like this, like a gumbo. Got to rotate it. See how nice that is? And continue sauteing this entire dish. And if you want to make it look really good for presentation, take a little paprika and put it on top. There you go. Whoops. Oh. I lost a little Hungarian paprika. Not too much, though. Okay, so cover that up. That goes on top of the rice when it's done. So between this entire container of rice and all that food there for $6 or for $4, it will actually take it up to 6 And let's change the, the header here because I want to make this accurate. Yeah, we'll do it to $6. And yes, I hear you. Hello. That's weird. So we'll do six for six. We'll do chicken shrimp rice, shrimp squash. Okay. We think we really rounded this out, you know? What a meal, huh? And the taste is exquisite, really. You, you, won't, you won't be sorry with adding the rice or adding the shrimp rather. Okay. Thank you for that, and uh, thank you for hanging out with David in his kitchen. Jasmine rice with chicken shrimp squash. Okay. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. I'll be back in the other room in about two minutes. Hang in there. Later. Later.